Hey, welcome back to The Health Bridge. Dr. Pedram Shojai in studio with my dear friend, Dr. Tammy Moralia. Hi. Hey. Nice to see you. Great to be here. Yeah, thanks for coming down. This is, uh, I know you, you live out in Seattle, uh, up in Seattle, I guess, and so we're in Southern California now. And um, it's warm here. It is warm here, but it's cold there. Yes, you froze. <laughs> <laughs> I, I spent a night uh, over there with uh, Tammy and her family and I was just shaking in my boots because I'm a brown guy who doesn't really like the cold and so now she's too warm here so. Because I'm white and I melt. Because you're white and you melt. So now <laughs> yes, we're even. Now we're even. <laughs> so uh, you are one of my favorite docs because you are not only a celebrity in this like I have a message out in the world thing, you have a clinical practice. Yeah. And you actually practice what you preach and you're in there with patients every day in your life. And to me that's refreshing because it's really easy to kind of get out into conjecture and talk about what people should do. And then you suggest things to patients and they don't do them. <laughs> or you know, you try things and they don't work. And so yeah. you have this wonderful laboratory called a practice, right. which you're still very actively engaged in. So tell me, like you're, you're doing all kinds of things in there. So tell me what you do in your integrative practice. Well, I love it. I'm an MD, but I'm board certified in naturopathic medicine, so I feel like I'm the most cynical naturopath out there. Uh -huh, <laughs> so good. it's truly customized, but we sort of have a tree that we go through. We start off by looking at people's hormones, then we look at their adrenals, dig into their nutrition, we detoxify, and then we go to more preventative stuff like what are your genetics, are you methylating or not, um, what are you at risk for in the future, and really making sure that the absence of disease does not equal wellness, that people aren't just fine, they're fabulous. And it's similar but different for every person, and it's been wonderful. Since my book came out, we are seeing patients from all over the country via Skype. Wow. So, I know, 21st century, who right? knew? So yeah, we have a team of doctors, and we create basically concierge naturopathic medicine at a gym membership price. Wow, that's yeah. pretty impressive. It's fun. Yeah, and plus, I mean, you, I guess you have the like the the pre-doctor visit jitters and the waiting room jitters. All that stuff goes away because you're just skyping in from your living room and exactly. you get to meet the doctor. Well, and all of our patients fill out a 12 or 13 page patient questionnaire beforehand. And one of the things I vowed when I opened my own clinic is that I wasn't going to practice like I did when I had traditional medicine. I wasn't going to open the chart for the first time when I saw the patient mm. and see them for six minutes. So we have an hour appointment and I've literally read all of that stuff. It's my bedtime reading the day before or two days before. So we really are spending our time moving forward because I have the luxury of knowing all of the background. Secretly, I'm kind of afraid that somebody will have some strange condition that I haven't heard about since medical school. <laughs> so that's totally. why I do it. <laughs> totally, totally. The fear of the unknown yeah. I think is really a big challenge in medicine. Yeah. And it's just like, you should have known that. And you're like, ah. Well, and anything that's powerful enough to do good can do harm. Yeah. So just because it's natural doesn't mean that it can't harm you. And there are things that interact. So I need to know the whole picture. I mm -hmm. need to know your family history. I need to know what you've struggled with before. I need to know what you eat, when you eat, how you sleep, when you go to sleep, what are your stressors? And so we can really implement a program that's gonna help. But we do have traditional medical problems that arise when you're digging that deep we do see the traditional stuff like high blood pressure, diabetes, cholesterol, you know, all of the over overweight, obesity, all of those things come up. Yeah, it's kind of a product of the lifestyle that we've lived and now we're seeing it on uh, patients' blood results and it's a thing. So uh, I actually want to dig into one of those today and just let's just look at, say, cholesterol mm, um, good one. as a, a functional doctor would and because you know it's it's this huge thing everyone's freaked out about their cholesterol numbers and, yeah. and it's a thing I mean there's problems but it's not just the baseline numbers there's all sorts of ways to look at it so let's just kind of peel that back and let's get into cholesterol today and this is such a great topic because I think it's one of the most confusing out there for the layperson. you know they go to their traditional doctor and they've been told they have high cholesterol and they've been told that they should get on a statin drug because it's the only thing that they want is to lower that number no matter what and then maybe they'll go to a functional physician who says oh cholesterol doesn't matter that much and so who do you believe and and as is the case many times it's somewhere in the middle 
You yeah. know, it's, it is not the end all and be all horrible thing, but it is also not meaningless in that it does represent something is going on that's wrong. And cholesterol is actually your body's ability to produce a solution. It's not the problem. It's trying to fix something, and that something is low-grade inflammation. Mm, there's that word again. I know. Okay, so when the body isn't functioning correctly, we have inflammation, right? Mm -hmm. So let's let's just get into that real quick for people who just don't understand the body at all, right? Yeah. So why, when there's problems, do we have inflammation? Well, there's a number of ways that we get there, and I think that it's the problem is almost any way you go through your day, you can end up with an inflammatory response. You know, inflammation can occur if you don't have enough sleep. Inflammation can occur from eating the wrong foods or not eating the right foods. Inflammation can occur from stress, and I think that's sort of the biggest one that affects us here. Mm -hmm. Then inside the body, we have our cells, and they literally create chemicals based on the stimuli of our sympathetic versus our parasympathetic nervous system. Sympathetic is fight, flight, or freeze, and the parasympathetic is healing, rejuvenation, and fixing things and preventing problems. Digestion is one of those things. So when you're in the fight, flight, or freeze all the time, that creates a cascade of chemicals that create inflammation. It's more acidic in environment, and basically, the end thing that you need to think about is it's a breaking down process. It's a breaking apart process. Mm -hmm. And if you're breaking apart faster than you're fixing, you're aging. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what it is in a nutshell. You're either aging down the path of a disease because inflammation participates in most of the diseases that we think of taking away our longevity or our quality of life and actual just aging. Inflammation affects our skin and just our overall energy. So we have to switch and find out why we're in this inflammatory response and fix it. And so then the body creates or uses this thing called cholesterol to kind of plug up holes, to deal with this inflammation? Like how does cholesterol come in to deal with this inflammation as like a canary in the coal mine? It's a big, huge topic, and the story I'm going to share with you is not 100% inclusive or 100% accurate, but it'll give you a good idea, and it'll give you the gist of the story. And you can tell I have small children when I tell this story. Um, so we breathe oxygen, and oxygen is actually two oxygen molecules bound together by a double bond. And the process of respiration, we break those up, and we end up with two oxygen molecules that have a single electron. And those are like crazy, unstable, mentally disturbed terrorists. They are absolutely ready to find and will do anything to link back up with another electron, including bumping into, destroying, and damaging everything that's in their way. And oxygen goes through our entire body, right? That's why we live. In that process, those are called free radicals. And free radicals are associated with cancer and disease, everything bad. So cholesterol comes down and it tries to fix the damage. You know, the free radicals go through and they crash into the inside of our arteries and cause damage. Well, the inside of our arteries knows that there's this little damage and it sends this message. Help, 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 mm -hmm. I need help. Cholesterol's the king of the castle. It is what every one of your hormones is made out of. It's not a bad guy. So he says, oh, I'll save you, and dun 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 it goes down. And it just so happens it's this beautiful patch-like material. It reinforces the inside called the intima, and on we go. So that's no problem, but the free radicals keep going by, and it oxidizes that cholesterol. And oxidized cholesterol is LDL, and LDL is the lousy guy. Mm -hmm. So then, when that builds up, it narrows the opening of your artery. And now there's increased pressure. So now not only do you have cholesterol building up, but now your blood pressure goes up. Mm -hmm. So this is part of our metabolic 
triad, you know, the metabolic syndrome. Now we've got blood pressure. So guess what the artery does? Sends another message. Help, help, I'm having the increased pressure as well. Out goes cholesterol and it says, I'll save you. And the artery's like, yeah, right. You caused the problem. And the cholesterol says, no, 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 no. It's actually the free radicals. And it made me into a bad guy. I'll send the hazmat team, the H. DL. And we'll come by, we'll pick up the hazardous material, and we'll take it to the detoxification center, which is the liver. Problem is, most people's liver is all backed up. Backed up from the red wine, backed up from the pesticide, backed up from the chemicals in our skin care, the stress, and it's just backed up. And so the liver says, you're just going to have to wait. Not now. Not now. Yeah. I have to deal with one thing at a time, just like at the airport. You know, you go through security one thing at a time. So it goes back around and it gets deposited again so that we have cholesterol that goes up and up and up and up. So really, traditional medicine says, well then, cholesterol is bad. Mm -hmm. But it's not. It's the oxidized, it's the free radicals. So one of the ways that you can actually fix your cholesterol is to deal with the antioxidants and or the free radicals by having antioxidants. Mm -hmm. Now I know that, you know, you've done you know, functional medicine and, and have been a practitioner and, and live the life. What I find is that a lot of people want to have a pill at the beginning. You know, just give me a vitamin C or coenzyme Q10. I'll take it. And then after about six to nine months, they come with this bag and say, I need to get rid of these. What is all this stuff? Can you please help me? I'm taking like 25 pills. And so what I want people to realize is that your food can be your medicine. And so our living food, our sprouts, our dark green vegetables, things that are really brightly colored, those are rich in antioxidants. Hmm. And so those can literally sop up the free radicals and create this system where the, the oxygen doesn't cause the free radical damage, and so we don't have that LDL. So therefore, the cholesterol doesn't need to get released, therefore, therefore, therefore. Right. Yeah. So you're, you're dealing with root cause mm -hmm. rather than let's just deal downstream and fix this outcome. Well, there's no point in fixing the outcome. And statin drugs do lower cholesterol, but like I said, cholesterol is needed. And for women, there was a huge study that showed that the Statin drugs did not lower disease or um, death. Right, so you're it bringing down work. this marker, but the marker isn't necessarily the, the problem. I mean, eventually yeah. it could be if you're throwing enough uh, you know, clogged cholesterol down tiny arteries, but right. stopping the problem, you're saying, starts with having an antioxidant-rich diet. Um, let's jump into this liver part because that seems to be uh, a real kind of, uh, A, it's a, a kind of global challenge at this point. Mm -hmm. We're talking about this this morning. It's just, you can't not, like I have Chinese herbs that are all suspect now because of all the heavy metals and all the stuff. So yeah. no matter what you're doing, there's the dirty world from the outside coming in. So what, like, do we need to simultaneously detox the liver? Uh, how much does the liver um, on the front line deal with this for us to do like some sort of treatment or some sort of parameters to fix that on the front end? You know, lots of people don't think that their liver is congested because we don't really have a test. You know, you can get a liver test, a liver function test, AST, ALT, alkaline phosphatase, G GDT, all of these things. But that only tells us if your liver is so sick. It's exploding. <laughs> yeah, okay. that is literally leaching enzymes into the bloodstream. That's too late. You know, there's been over 20,000 chemicals released into our food and our environment just since the Second World War. And your liver has to deal with all of them. Mm -hmm. So I think that you should be proactive in your health and you should just clean out your liver twice a year. Mm. If you're on medication that you have to take to stay alive and healthy, then you should maybe do it once a season. Mm -hmm. And you know, I know Chinese medicine, they have a certain time of the year that it's better to detox. But I think the best time of year is when you can do it. You, you know? When you're full and you need it. <laughs> yeah, or, or when you can be successful because you're not on an airplane, you know, six out of seven days. Yep. So we need to clean it out. We would never expect the filter in our car to last 40 years. Right. Never. But we just keep driving. Yeah. It's the same with the filter in our air conditioning and it's the same with the filter in our bodies, which is the liver. Yeah. Um, so 
The other side of this is the medicine. So the statins, there's been all kinds of stink about you know all the side effects of statins and all the problems people are having with muscle problems and yada yada. Diabetes. Yada. Diabetes. Double the secondary. risk. Secondary. So right. So you're doubling the risk of diabetes by taking something to bring down the cholesterol, right. which isn't the actual problem. So. Right. You know, I'm sure 80% of the people that come in with like some cholesterol issue into your clinic are already on a statin because that's like such a quick thing to be dispensed in mm -hmm. our culture. So how, do, how does one even consider unwinding that and like backing out of that kind of statin use? Because it sounds like they got to do it for the rest of their lives. You know, this is where the, you know, in my brain there lives you know, maybe it's because I'm a Gemini. <laughs> there lives two doctors. And the studies are pretty clear that if you're a man and you've had a heart attack, that a statin drug does improve the outcome of a possible second heart attack. And it has something to do with an anti-inflammatory property that we don't really understand. Um, but after that, it's just that the harmful side effects outweigh any possible benefits to anybody else. Do you know they're actually marketing statin drugs to children now? Instead of dealing with the fact that their liver is so congested with fat, because we now have so many fat kids, they're just choosing to do a statin drug on kids. So we really need to focus on the upstream problem and not just doing that. And it starts with your mindset. So I'm not gonna be able to convince somebody to take off their statin if they're in fear. Sure. You know, we have to, we have to try and we wean. We don't stop a statin drug cold turkey. You can actually cut them in half, you can take them every other day, and it takes a while for your body to stop its usual routine of inflammation. Mm -hmm. So it's usually an 8 to 12 week process where we're weaning off the statin drugs and we're building up the anti-cholesterol program of anti-inflammatory and sopping up the free radicals and things like that. Uh, I want to be uh, clear on one thing real quickly. If you're listening to this or watching this, don't go weaning yourself off drugs unsupervised. That's just a bad idea. Yeah. So what we're talking about is working with a physician who knows what they're doing right. to help support you in a protocol because I know a lot of people that just like stop taking their pills and that's a recipe for disaster. I feel like if the, if the drug is in your hand because it had a prescription, then somebody who has the ability to write a prescription should participate in taking you off of it. Um, I think that over-the-counter things are a little easier to self-guide, but if it's a prescription, you really need mm -hmm. to get somebody who has the knowledge of how to do that. Some things can have devastating side effects. You know, some blood pressure medications have what's called rebound hypertension, so your blood pressure gets twice as bad if you abruptly stop. Right. Right, yes, and that's, that's good bad point. news. That's bad <laughs> that's news. Bad news. Strokes are bad. Well, yeah, well, this is you know this is for me being down in the trenches, and you know because I'm a doctor of Oriental medicine, people will come in and be like, you know, out with all that stuff. You're my hero, and I'm like, I you know I don't know what you think I'm going to do here, but you've been on these drugs for years, mm -hmm. so now we need to work with the person who prescribed this to undo this. And if that person's not willing to have an intelligent conversation, then let's find you a new doctor who's. Right? Reasonable. Yeah, you can fire your doctor. You can fire your doctor. Right. I have a whole chapter of it in my book, The Hormone Secret. You have a doctor who works for you. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And and they don't, and like, you know, it's just this kind of like paternalistic model of just like, you listen to me and you shut up. That doesn't necessarily uh, support anybody in this, in this kind I'm of new so realm. I'm so sad about that. Um, I wish that my colleagues, you know, I went to school for 13 years. And that's something to be proud of, of all my education and, and all of the knowledge that was shoved into my brain. But the problem with that train of thought is that you don't have time to consider other things. I was very lucky I went to medical school late so I didn't swallow all the Kool-Aid. Mm. So I, and I ended up doing a fellowship. But I literally have had physicians who email me or phone me when we have shared patients and say, you practice in a parallel universe. I have no idea what you're talking about. And when I show them the studies, they've never even heard them. But instead of going, hmm, this is something to consider, they just shut the door. Yeah. And that's so sad. That's, you know, I found that um, to be the case more often than I'd like. And it's actually, it's saddening because scientists will look at evidence and then make decisions. And if there's evidence that suggests there's another way uh, that possibly breaks your, your paradigm, then your hypothesis was incorrect and you have to re-examine everything. Right. And because they're just too damn busy to think for themselves, it's like, that's threatening and I don't have time for that crap. So I'm gonna stay over here. 
and you shut up with your hippie stuff, right? Like it just, right. it, it's, it's really too much for a lot of these guys. Well, and we don't seem to ever learn. The physician that came up with the idea that an ulcer was actually from a bacterium instead of acid being released from stress and food and things like that, um, nearly lost his license. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was completely shunned and ridiculed and so, we're not very great with accepting new ideas, but we have to, we have to be open. And then again, on the other hand, I, I don't think that every natural thing is the answer for every person. There are some things that if you have a blood pressure that's, you know, 180 over 200 and you're in my office, you are walking out with a prescription for a blood pressure medication. And then we're going to work on getting you off of it. But I think that, that neither side is completely right 100% of the time. I think that you have to be open. Yeah, and, and just to be clear, um, uh, from my side of the fence, um, there is a lot of kind of anti-establishment, like screw those guys sentiment on the, on the kind of, you know, the natural Chinese organic side of the fence. And that person, who needs the blood pressure medication needs it now, but they probably don't want to take it for the rest of their lives. That's right. where that that huge kind of like that space in between the yeah. moment they walk in in a critical condition and then talking about their lifestyle and all the things that can be changed to not have their body freak out like that. Right. That's where the good stuff happens. Yeah. Right. And yeah. that's where medicine is headed in the future because you get hit by a bus, you go straight to the ER. Right. You're about to blow a, a you know a, your a vein or, a, or, <laughs> or an artery appendix. or something or appendix. You go. To the hospital, right. everything in between, that's open for discussion. And that's where I think this renaissance is happening in medicine. It's what people like you and I can sit here and have a Yeah, this that's why we're so excited. And and I think that the people out there don't realize that there's a way. There's a way right. that you don't have to throw out all the medication that your traditional doctor told you to take, but you can work on creating what you have in your life to wean off of them and my patients we lower blood we lower our blood cholesterol levels 30 to 40 points and we get people off of their statin drugs it just is what it is it if you do this program that we have it is definitely going to result in that and you know my husband was one of the people I started this from. Mm. You know, he genetically just has this propensity for diabetes and um, high cholesterol. He works out every day, he's not fat, and so why, he was so angry, why do I have this? He felt like he was being cheated by his own mm. body. Yep. So he just had to be given the tools, and that's where this originated. So he had this despite doing everything right, quote unquote. Yeah. And you had to make some adjustments and go there. Um, was he on statins at any point? Was he on anything that? He was given them. You know, he came home with a prescription and he said, what should I do? You know, I'm scared. And so he's my husband and he was tempted right. to take them because he was scared. And it's hard to treat a spouse well. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> I tend to I tend to avoid it, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. so okay, you know, back up a real quick second, because I know someone out there who is holding a, a statin drug is wondering what the hell does this even do? Like, how does a statin work? Can we get into just the the little kind of baseline of that, so that then we can jump in to the uh, kind of the, the fundamentals of what diet and kind of a, a lifestyle program would do to unravel that? So there's three ways that your body produces cholesterol and it's a path and in that path cholesterol is at a certain point and then beyond that boom there's the product and if you think about you know a conveyor belt of a production line boom ba -doo, this is added this is added this is that and at the end there's your product ta-da cholesterol mm -hmm. and statin drugs work at a certain point that interrupts the production and so there is no end product. So that means there's no end product to make testosterone, progesterone, estrogen, DHEA, all of those things. Oops. Yeah, oops. All the things that are going to bless your life cannot also be made because now there's no raw, raw ingredients. Mm. But, you know, backing up, why do we make cholesterol? Well, we make cholesterol out of what we eat. We make cholesterol in our own bodies, and then there's a genetic propensity that sort of has a set point. And that's the challenge. It's like I tell my patients all the time, I'm sorry, you should have picked your parents better. <laughs> but it is what it is, and now you're going to have to have this sort of lifestyle. It's not, I'm going to do this and fix it. It's, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. You don't go to the gym, get in shape, and then stop going to the gym. Right. 
you have to keep going. Oh, come on. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that, but that's the promise, right? Is like, oh, you know what? We got this. Here's a pill. Oh my God, thank you. Right. And then six months, 12 months, 18 months later, when you're taking that pill and your muscles are achy and you've lost your sex drive, mm -hmm. you realize that that pill wasn't a quick fix and it was replacing a lifestyle fix that you weren't willing to do then and now you're kind of stuck having to keep taking it. You have to pay. <laughs> At some point. <laughs> it's just physics. There right. is no action without another reaction. So mm -hmm. you can pay now or you can pay later with the diabetes or you can pay later with the muscle ache or you can pay later later with the increased risk of dementia. Mm -hmm. There's always Pick a payment. Your yeah. Okay, I'm listening to this saying, all right, um, I'm in. I'm ready to change my diet. I'm ready to, to do what it takes to do this. Where would I start? Liver. You already mentioned, so liver, you start with liver. Liver. So, it's the exit. Doesn't matter what you do, if it can't get out, what's the point? Got you it. have to clear out the liver. You know, um, there's a condition that is called fatty liver. Mm -hmm. The fancy name is hepatosteatohepatitis. And so it just basically means that your liver is inflamed because it's got so much fat in it and it is at epidemic levels right now in North America, Europe, and Australia and New Zealand. Mm. And it mimics liver cirrhosis, it mimics all kinds of stuff, and it's just a congested liver. Is that because of the, the toxic world that we live in predominantly? or? I mean, for me, I actually had it. Like his, we went on um, a health bridge show where I was starting to show a fatty, early fatty liver, and mm. it was just bad with fructose, right? And and so there's a lot of reasons that might come, and we actually ended up clearing out my liver, and everything was fine. But yeah, um, the liver is so forgiving. You yeah. couldn't ask for a nicer organ. Ask any college Hack kid. Half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But there's a point where it just says seriously and it stops doing other functions that it doesn't think are as urgent mm. to deal with those things that are toxins, alcohol, fructose, things that just have to be dealt with. So life goes on, liver's starting to do it, but once the filter starts to get choked out, then anything you throw at it is gonna kind of bounce back. So how does, like, what are the ways to clear out the liver? Is this like a, like a detox that you do? Do you do coffee enemas? I mean, what, what, is, <laughs> what am I getting into here? Yeah. <laughs> well, so I've been recommending a liver detox for my patients, especially at the beginning of a cholesterol reducing program so that we clean out the exit. And it stemmed from wanting to find one that I could just point people at. And what I found was kind of scary. And we have to go over a little bit of physiology, but it's not going to be scary physiology. <laughs> Remember, I, I talk to eight-year-olds all the time. There's phase one and phase two detoxification of the, of the liver. And phase one takes things apart. And oftentimes those things that are apart are more dangerous than when they started. And phase two puts it back together with other things in a process called conjugation so that it can be removed from the body. And what I found is that most liver detox programs only took people through phase one. That frightened mm. me. Mm. That scared me because things were becoming more dangerous. So all of our toxins are gonna to be stored and they love to hang out in our fat. And there's fat everywhere. One of the main things that people say when they get their liver cleanse or detox done is that they think more clearly. Well, if you think about that, that makes total sense. Our brains are made up of so much fat. And if the toxins are hanging out in your fat, Clearing it out, that's great. Mm -hmm. So phase one and phase two is to get her on out and making it more water soluble. So this program really is all about what foods you should eat, but also what foods you shouldn't eat. And it's not a diet, it's not restrictive, it's about abundance, but if you're gonna get your liver to do some work to clean it out, you should give it a rest. Mm -hmm. Don't make it work on a red wine. Right. Don't make it work on a grass-fed beef. Is grass-fed beef okay? Yes, but not during a liver detox. So it's what foods you want to focus on, what foods you want to avoid. We want to pull some of these toxins out with some ingredients, and we do that in the detox protein so that you're having that every day. Then you want to get in and heal the liver cells. They're called Kupfer cells. And get each individual one to have some ingredients that you have to heal them. And then you want anti-inflammatory. Then this whole body is amazing. We've got the lymphatic system, so we want to 
stimulate the lymphatic system by using dry skin brushing. And then the whole purpose is to make things water soluble to leave the body. So there's a detoxification tea that acts like a magnet to pull it and it makes you pee a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you're drinking it all day. So just just to be clear, the only way out is either sweating, peeing, or pooping. And breathing. And breathing. So your breath might not be your best not, feature not then. during yeah. the detox. How, how long are we talking about? Two weeks, three Two weeks? weeks? Two weeks. But, you know, the people that have really high um, cholesterol, the people that are on medication that they have to continue to be on, you know, you might need more. Mm -hmm. More is not worse. You know, three weeks is, is a great time. Two weeks is super successful, mm -hmm. though, for the majority of people. Mm -hmm. What about things like Tylenol and, and, and kind of like, you know, because a lot of the people I know that have high cholesterol also have aches and pains all over their bodies. So they're taking all sorts of painkillers just to get through their days. And it's just, it's like insult to injury in a lot of ways. You know, I always say if, if it is life altering, then go with an over the counter that is processed through a different organ. Tylenol is actually processed through the liver, so it's mm -hmm. the worst. Mm -hmm. um, but if it's not life threatening, with love in my heart, I say suck it up. Right. <laughs> you know, right. it's just the less burden that your body has to deal with as it's going through this process, the easier and more successful it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And there are people, there are people who can't get through their day because of their pain, and, and I support them in taking whatever they need to. Mm -hmm. But it just might take longer. Yep, yep, because you can't detox and retox simultaneously, it <laughs> yeah. turns out, right? It's a filter, it goes in yep. and out and in and out. Yeah. Okay. So we're talking about a couple weeks of clearing out the liver, mm -hmm. changing the diet on the front end. Uh, first of all, during the liver detox, we're talking about no meat and you know specific kind of like high antioxidants, uh, more fiber, more like what is there any like there's some weird things. Tomatoes, such an amazing food. You know, I'm married to an Italian, so we have tomatoes mm -hmm. all the time. It's processed through the liver. So you're going to take a break from these things that are processed through the liver, and there's a list. Uh, luckily, I didn't have to come up with it. There's lots of research about what's processed through the liver. Great, and we'll and we'll post some of that just so you guys get a sense of that without having to get too didactic here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So then, and then uh, getting the proper antioxidants on board to help bring down the systemic inflammation, I guess, would be. Yeah. On the menu, like. How and I prefer to use food. Uh, so fiber is huge in lowering cholesterol. And you can actually catch two fish with one hook by having smoothies instead of juices. Mm. So you can use food as a medicine. You can have five or six servings in a blended green smoothie, mm -hmm. but you've got the fiber. You've got the whole food. You know, we used to think that, yay, we've discovered all the vitamins and minerals. We're so awesome. We're going to make pills and we won't get sick anymore. Well, there's a multi-billion dollar industry of supplements and we're sicker than ever. Right. So guess what? Those supplements have to go to the liver to get processed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you can use food as your medicine, that's gonna be great. But the vitamins are, it turns out, the tip of the iceberg. Underneath is this thing called phytonutrients. And phytonutrients excite me almost as much as a microbiome, but phytonutrients are literally the things that give your fruits and vegetables a color, but they're what the plant uses to defend itself. And it turns out that it has a protective role in us when we eat them. And so we don't know how to replicate phytonutrients in a pill form. Mm. And when you dry and powder and do all of that, I'm not sure if your phytonutrients are left in their intact state. So get your living food, stick it in a blender, mix it up and drink living enzymes. Hmm. Got it. And that's easy enough. So you get some fiber in there, you get your phytonutrients, you obviously got water in there. And or coconut water because I love all the minerals. Um, where does like good fat come into this gestalt? Oh, I love fat. Uh -huh. um, so independent studies repeatedly have shown that if you have 3,000 to 5,000 milligrams of the omega-3 fatty acids that are found in fish oil and things like that, you are actually going to lower your LDL number and increase the HDL. The HDL is the healthy. So it's really hard to increase your healthy cholesterol. You know, exercise, genetics, and 
omega-3 fatty acids is kind of it. Mm -hmm. So having something that lowers the bad guys and increases the good guys all in one fell swoop is great. But what I find is that I would say 99% of my patients think they're taking 3,000 milligrams of omega-3 because they look on the bottle. You have to look on the back and you have to find the omega-3 line and you will find that you might be needing to take eight or ten pills mm -hmm. to get that three thousand now another thing is is that if you burp and it and it kind of is like fishy that means it's rancid and so that starts a whole process of free radicals because mm -hmm. your rancid is just oxidized. full of oxidized yeah so that's not going to help mm -hmm. so you need to get a good source free of mercury got the omega-3s in there, and you need to have that every day. Um, Food-wise, avocados, walnuts, you know, in Chinese medicine, I you know, studied it for like a nanosecond, so you're probably the expert on this, that they, I heard that the walnut was thought to be good for the brain because it looked like a brain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the omega-3s. Yeah. It's so great. Chia seeds, you can stick in your green smoothies to get the omega-3 fatty acids. Mm -hmm. So that is anti-inflammatory and that's why we think it's helping so much. We have an omega-6 and 9 rich diet, we need to get the omega-3s. And unless you're eating, you know, four ounces of wild salmon every day, you should supplement. Yeah, and it's really hard to get good, clean, wild salmon. And, yeah. you know, I think we could both recommend that, saying, you know, eat more fish. But at a yeah. certain point, I've also heard this, you know, a few times now, and you're kind of reiterating this, is if you're detoxing, just cut the animal protein for a couple of weeks. Yeah, plants are anti-inflammatory. Over and over and over, we have seen that it just is more work for our body to process animal products. Mm -hmm. And that's not to say never, but that's why the detox protein is pea protein. It's mm -hmm. a it's a vegetable based protein. And it's really low it's it's a low allergy thing, right? So yeah. there's a, people have problems with everything nowadays. I know. And it's, you know, I know we could get into maybe we should do a whole other show on the microbiome I and mean, we talk about it a lot on the health bridge, but um, it, you know, we can't overemphasize how important it is to have your gut right that runs in the middle. So it's like, you know, everyone goes, what's the answer? Oh, it's the liver. No, it's not. It's all of it. But let's start with the liver and let's just clean things up. But it's once you're symphony. clean. Yeah, yeah, you can't, you know, if the violins are sound terrible, the whole symphony stinks. Mm -hmm. it, you can't just say one thing, but at the same time, it's overwhelming. And so it's hard to work on everything. And the liver is the exit sign. So if you're doing a cleanup and you don't clear the exit, that's not thinking ahead. Yeah. One of the metaphors I've used is, you know, you want to go into your kitchen and cook dinner, but no one took out the trash like a couple nights ago. And it's like you can't even like, it's like it doesn't feel right to be in there anymore because it's no. gross. So yeah. you know, take out the trash and then you'll have an appetite to like make some delicious food. And that's the liver, right? Like right. it needs to process this stuff out. So um, can we get uh, links to what you recommend just so oh, our absolutely. listeners and viewers can see it? Yeah, Excellent. Absolutely. Um, I want to thank you so much for being here. It's just oh, awesome it's to have you in town. It's awesome to be in the same room. For those of you who are watching, we're actually in a room together. Yeah. And, and yeah, that, you know, in the Skype universe, sometimes it's really nice to yeah. actually see people. Touch you. <laughs> uh, what's your website so people can uh, find you? DrTammy.com, D-R-T-A-M-I. And there's a free hormone quiz and a whole bunch of free information. You know, you and I talked about this a little bit earlier where, you know, you go to some of these amazing places and amazing websites and amazing experts in this health space and what they're doing is leading you to buy their stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think the one thing I love about working with you is that, you know, we have created stuff for a shortcut. Mm -hmm. But we're also going to tell you exactly how to get what you need and in what dosage. If you want to go find it somewhere else, that's fine. I'm just doing, I'm just saving time and doing the homework for you if you prefer the shortcut. And so that's what the liver kit is. You can go and do it on your own, but I've made it easy because I think most people say they don't have enough time and they're overwhelmed so it, it serves a need yeah and it's, a, and it's a problem like people are looking for someone to trust and it's hard to trust people on the internet and you know what frankly a lot of these kind of internet celebrity docs a lot of them haven't practiced for a very long time I know. 
and don't really have business talking about stuff because they're not up on you know kind of research and there, there's just a lot of problems kind of inherent. So it's nice to have someone who is still on the front lines, every dealing day. with patients every day, talking about stuff that she's changing every day in people's lives. So thanks for staying in medicine and doing yeah, what you do. That's what I love. Awesome.